I realize I don't even really know you, and I, I want to get to know you. Jess, it's okay. I, I don't want you to force something that's not there. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 new girl mistakes that were left in the show. I, I knew it. How did I not see this coming? Carlos found out that I played bass somehow, and then he asked me to sit in. We're colorblind, dude. What? I am not colorblind. I'm not colorblind. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. For this list, we'll be looking at character inconsistencies and continuity errors that were left in the final cut of this quirky sitcom. Did you catch any of these blunders when you watch the show? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Schmidt doesn't know how to do laundry. Or not knowing how to do laundry? Like everyone else, yes, Winston. When Jess is out of town and Schmidt spills an entire glass of sangria on her bedspread, it becomes evident that he has no idea how to do laundry. His attempt to use the machine includes straining the soap through the lint trap, and putting quarters into the detergent compartment. That's so silly. The quarters. That's right, the quarters. This quirk does not fit with Schmidt's character at all, as he obviously has the highest standards for cleanliness in the loft. In the first season of the show, he even freaks out when he finds out that he and Nick have been using the same towel. Are you out of your mind? What do you mean am I? How do you think this is your towel? Do you even wash it? No, I don't wash the towel. The Wait. towel washes me. Who washes a towel? You never wash. You wash your towel? You never wash the towel? As hilarious as this season four laundry scene is, it seems implausible that Schmidt went this long without his roommates finding out he doesn't know how to use a washing machine. Number 9. Robbie's Scar Now what you're seeing is pure, unfiltered Robbie, straight from the tap. When it comes to Robbie, it seems there's no shortage of continuity errors. During his return in Season 6, an accident with Jess leads to a scar on his upper lip and a pretty sizable cast on his leg. I know what I'm not thankful for this year. This, this is it. Though he seems to perk up when he and Jess start seeing each other, he understandably still has the scar, since it's, you know, a scar. I know, I haven't been sailing much since I broke most of my body and face. You look good to me. But in an episode that reveals some pretty extraordinary details about him, including sharing a gardener with Vin Diesel and being the subject of a PBS documentary after saving Elon Musk, it seems what is most surprising about Robbie is his superhuman healing abilities. While earlier scenes still show him with a scar, by the episode's end, it's gone. Who are you, Robbie? Tell me literally everything that's ever happened to you. Just watch the PBS special. What? Number eight, Winston is colorblind. Do we think now is really the right time to be starting a, a puzzle? <laughs> yeah, I'm great at puzzles. <laughs> You're a born puzzler, Winston. Throughout this episode, Winston struggles with a jigsaw puzzle, and there's even a hilarious scene in which he reveals that he can't tell the difference between green and brown. Right Winston, now. those shoes are not brown, they're green. What the hell yeah, are you those, talking about, those man? Those shoes are green. You guys are idiots, all right? They're as brown as what money. Color? This detail could could have survived as a character quirk for Winston if it hadn't contradicted his later career as a cop for the LAPD. You look like the funny guy from Police Academy who does the, the voices and different sounds. <laughs> the medical evaluation to join the LAPD even states that candidates must be able to accurately and quickly name colors. While it's unclear exactly what type of color blindness Winston has, it seems to be pretty severe and would have been likely bad enough that it would disqualify him from joining a police force. Number seven, Schmidt's towel. My arms are so sore, they're doing so many push-ups. That seems like a lie. The show uses a lot of the actors' improvisations, which means that some of New Girl's hilarious moments have led to quite a few editing inconsistencies. At the start of this episode, Nick and Schmidt are having a steam in the shower room and talking about recovering from breakups. In typical Schmidt fashion, he whips off the towel around his waist to make a point about what Cece's missing out on. How could you be interested in a boy when she could have these ripe berries? Look at these, Nick. Put your towel down. When Winston walks in, the towel is magically wrapped around Schmidt's waist again. Then, as the three have a bit of back and forth, the next cut shows the towel draped over his shoulder. Keep telling yourself that, Nick. Number six, the location of the mural in Winston's room. You have seven identical stripe long sleeve shirts? Yeah, I, I know it's strange. Um... This iconic mural wasn't always behind Winston's bed. In season one, after Jess moves into the loft and tries to befriend their landlord, Remy finds the weird alien mural inside Winston's closet. Good God, what is this? 
Why would you do this? While Winston was in Latvia, Schmidt took over his bedroom and had this hilariously bizarre painting commissioned. In later episodes, the mural, or a very similar looking one, suddenly takes up much more space and spans the whole wall behind Winston's bed. What? What the hell are you doing to my face, Jess? I said a soft blend. Soft! However, considering the landlord told the group to paint over the mural he found in the closet, it doesn't seem likely that they had the same thing recommissioned on an entire wall. Paint over it! Or you pay for it. Number 5. Nick's beer disappears. Look at the suds. You ruined a beer. While this season 6 episode seems to have a ton of editing inconsistencies, this detail is one of the most obvious blunders. Cece and Schmidt are having a lot of issues with their apartment construction, and the renovations are going really slowly. Nick ends up helping Schmidt negotiate with the contractor, and even tries to teach him how to act tougher. Over time, they start believing that they're being ripped off. When Nick asks, how did I not see this coming, and turns to face Schmidt, the beer bottle he was holding in his right hand completely vanishes. I, I knew it. How did I not see this coming? With an editing issue like this, this episode definitely could have used some reconstruction. Number 4. Robbie doesn't like music. I want you to meet Robbie, my, uh, my boyfriend. At the beginning of season 2, Cece comes to Schmidt's rebranding party with her new boyfriend. Schmidt is pretty confused about why Cece is with a guy like Robbie, and starts interrogating him to figure out what his deal is. When he asks him if he's in a band, Robbie comes up with this weird response. You in a band? I, I, don't, I don't like music. What's up with me, you know? This turns out to be a total contradiction, as Robbie reveals later in the series that he played bass on a Santana album. Is that a gold record on your wall? Hmm? Oh yeah, I, I played bass on a Santana album. Who are you? Robbie's initial claim that he doesn't like music could have possibly been sarcasm or a lie, perhaps because he could tell that Schmidt wasn't his biggest fan when they first met. But considering all the Robbie inconsistencies we've already seen, this was probably an oversight. Thought you would have mentioned that before. Yeah, you guys asked me surprisingly little about my personal life. Number three, the landline phone. I'm so sorry, they're building a new building next door and I have terrible reception. Hey, no more phone calls, get out of my room. When everyone in the loft has issues with their cell reception, Jess proposes a radical idea, a home phone. Fascinating. Where do you put your music? Why is there a rope? Dream. Oh, that's cool. just like the movies. It's surprising to see an entire episode dedicated to a landline, especially since the group acts confused about how the technology works. All of the roommates are in their 30s at this point, and definitely would have grown up with one at home. They also seem to have forgotten that they already had a landline at one point. Back in season two, Jess and Winston even stole it when they were staging a robbery. What about this? Landline? Me, it looks like a mess sandwich! Number 2. Schmidt and Nick's Age Difference Any flashback scenes of Nick and Schmidt as roommates in college makes it safe for us to assume they're about the same age. However, certain details in the early seasons of the show reveal a pretty big inconsistency about their age difference. I dropped out of law school. I had three semesters to go. Oh, what? So close. Oh, so you're still trying to figure it out, right? That's, that's what your 20s are for. I'm 30, so... During the group's first Thanksgiving together in Season 1, Nick tells Paul that he's 30. And just a few episodes later, everyone celebrates Schmidt's 29th birthday. <laughs> Everything seems to make sense, until this scene happened in the second season. You're six months younger than me, Schmidt. If Nick says that Schmidt is only six months younger than him, it would have been impossible for Nick to be 30 when Schmidt was still 28. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jess's fear of confined spaces and places. Look, I'm going to tell you something about myself. I am really claustrophobic. In season 2, Jess decides to share something weird about herself with Winston, and tells him that she's extremely claustrophobic. She tries to prove her point by shutting herself in her closet, but she begins panicking when the door gets stuck. This is not funny, Let Jess! Me, uh, can you open up the Jess? door? It's closed! Oh my god, Jess, oh. the door is stuck! The landlord even comes to help get her out. Oh. 
Oh, oh my thank goodness, God. thank you, man. Weirdly, in the very next episode, Jess hides in a tiny bathroom with Winston and Schmidt at a Christmas party. Oh my God, go, 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 go. Jess? And she seems to have no issue being cramped inside the small space with two other people. We may have been able to forgive this blunder if Jess hadn't contradicted her secret claustrophobia in back-to-back -back episodes. Jess? Jess? Yep. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.